Howdy, how's it going? Welcome back, or howdy if you're new. So today, guys, we're going to talk about a number of things, especially interesting to those ROG Ally owners, Lenovo Legion Go owners, laptop owners, or just smart device owners in general. I'm also going to be showing you why, if you're using a dock and an ROG Ally or a Lenovo Legion Go, why you might be leaving performance on the table, and I'm going to show you how to avoid doing so. A lot of people are still getting things confused in that department, so I will try to clear that up. But first and most importantly of all is this insanely efficient Ugreen 100 watt Nexode Pro charger. Comparing it to the last model, it is about half the size. The difference is it's actually got a much higher efficiency using their GAN Infinity technology mixed with their Air Pyra technology. And this basically is a 37% increase in density compared to the other Nexode. So it packs a huge punch. The two USB-C ports and USB-A provide a combined 100 watts of charging for up to three devices, smartphones, watches, tablets, laptops, you name it. So this also has a feature that's really important to me, and it is basically a temperature detection system. It's a millisecond response time. It actually can prevent overheating, overcharging, excessive current, and all that with its built-in thermal guard technology. If you have ever noticed when you plug your phone or you know device into one of those cheaply made chargers, they will make your device run really hot. And it can also damage your battery long term. So having a a charger that actually has the specific technology and good features like that that can save you money in the long run. I primarily use the Ugreen chargers around the house for my, you know, important devices, especially because I just don't like this charger at all. I don't have a way to unplug the cable and use a shorter one or a longer one if I need. And I'm going to also show you why it's important if you're using a dock to not use the factory charger. Cables are very important also. You wanna make sure that when you're buying a USB-C cable that it can do the power or more than what it's rated for. If you need 65 watts, I mean, yeah, you could probably get away with a 65 watt cable, but that's its theoretical maximum that it can transfer as far as watts go. These are 100 watt rated cables. And the reason that's important is because yes, the original charger is 65 watts, but when you are playing and charging at the same time, you're drawing every bit of that and more. I've actually had instances where I'm using my OLED cable right here. It has a power display where it will draw more than that when I'm charging and playing it. It sometimes goes up to like 66 watts, but I'll actually show you right here if it'll pop up on camera. Right now we're drawing 64 watts, 65 watts, and we are literally just sitting at the home screen. So imagine once I start running benchmarks or running games, it's going to be drawing, you know, that amount of power, if not more. I'm gonna show you this in real time because people still don't believe it. All right, so clear up any confusion. If you are using an ROG Ally or Lenovo, Legion Go, or any other similar powered handheld, I'm gonna show you why you need more than a 65 watt charger if you wanna squeeze every bit of performance out of this device. This is a cable that has an OLED display that shows in real time the amount of power that the device is trying to pull in order to both charge it and play it at the same time. You can see here, we're pulling about 58 watts, but earlier you could see it pull up to 65. Here's what happens. A lot of people are getting confused. These are not the same. This is the mode that it can go into, and that's called the 30 watt turbo or the 30 watt manual mode. And if you look at your APU wattage, that's just what it's currently drawing. But in the 30 watt mode, it's going to for sure be able to draw more than that 30 watts if you are plugged in to the right power adapter and have everything configured properly. I'm gonna prove that. All right, so you can see on the 25 watt turbo mode, 
we have a sentiment score of 13,481 points. And you could see over there that the APU was boosting over 25 watts. Even though we're on the 25 watt mode, it does still allow it to boost a little higher. So now we're going to show you what the charger does to our Cinebit score. So we're gonna plug in a factory charger here that we are on that 30 watt turbo mode. And now we're going to run the test again. We're gonna watch our wattages. So you can see here, it's automatically boosting up to 50, 52 watts. And this is plugged in. And you should see a much higher score and it is in that 30 watt mode. So, you know, it is a little weird how they call it 30 watts, but it's pulling more than 30 watts. But you've got to understand the GPU, the CPU, your NVMe drive, your screen, all of that uses power. So you really need to make sure you're supplying enough power to your device, especially when you're docked and you're gonna see why. And as the temperatures rise, that boost goes a little lower. And there are time limits on these boost as well. So it's down to about 39 watts. We're almost done with our test. And bam, look at that. 14,848. So a huge increase in score just from being plugged in. So that's 14,848 while plugged in on that 30 watt turbo mode. Now here's what's going to happen. I'm gonna take this particular dock. It doesn't matter what dock you use. They are all going to have this same uh, quirk about them. And the reason is, is it's stealing some of your power that's coming out of your power cable and it's sending power to the chipsets and all the devices inside of here. This device, no matter what dock you use, it's going to use up a good bit of power. So unfortunately the stock 65 watt power adapter that these devices come with is not going to get into that 30 watt manual mode where you see we had well over a thousand points increase on Cinebench. So let's make sure we're plugging this into the right spot. We'll set this here and we'll go right here. And first of all, you can see that we only have the 25 watt turbo. So we're gonna jump on into another Cinebench run and we're gonna watch the power usage. So you can see right now we're pulling 34, 34 watts. That's actually less than what we were doing earlier, but it's still more than that 25 watt mode, which is still completely normal. And you can see it settled at 30 really quickly before we never even dropped down to 30 when we were actually plugged in. So it's quite impressive to see the difference already. Okay, and our score that time was 13,395. So again, we have lost about a thousand points off of our Cinebench score just because we plugged it up to a dock. So the device is going to perform a little less on the FPS just because it does not have enough power to do both charge and play and dock and all of that. It just doesn't have quite enough power. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our 100 watt U green power adapter and I'm going to take my OLED cable here and I'm actually going to show you in real time what this bad boy is pulling on a Cinebench run. So you can see right here we're sitting at about 60, 61, 60. Now. We are in that 30 watt turbo mode once again. We're gonna go ahead and run that Cinebench one more time. And you can see already we're pulling 65, 67 watts, 68, 66. So we're pulling more power than what our OEM charger actually supports. So since we are on the 100 watt Ugreen charger, we have more than enough buffer room to pull that extra power. The docks all pull about the same, but when you start loading down the ports and you start plugging in more items, of course they're going to consume a little more, but out of the box with nothing plugged in, they're still consuming about 4 to 5 watts at the maximum. So now you can see we're pulling 38 watts consistently on the APU alone, 39, and 
there we go, 14,788 points. We're only about 100 points off from our, our peak, so that's actually within margin of error, but we're still over 1,000 points higher with the 100 watt cable than with the stock 65 watt cable. So proof is in the pudding. So just when people comment and say, oh, well, my dock can do 30 watts and I'm using a 65 watt charger, I call cap on it. And every time I have them come in the discord and prove it to me, and they're always referencing this screen right here. And they're not actually looking right here to see what mode they're enabled. Um, they're not running benchmarks. They're not testing anything at all. I will say there's one thing that can um, do the 30 watt manual mode. And there's a caveat to that as well. It's this dock right here. You have to flash the firmware on it. It is a little tricky, but this dock right here can do 30 watt turbo, but it charges at a much slower rate because it's actually stealing some of that power that it would normally use to charge the battery and it's sending it to the dock. So it charges a little bit slower. That's the caveat to it. I don't think a lot of people are really hearing me out when I say, by your leaving performance on the table. So I figured I would show you with a benchmark to actually give you a better insight to why it's happening, how it's happening, and what it looks like on paper. So if you're wanting to play a game, for example, like Modern Warfare, you might be leaving 10 to 15 FPS on the table. And as well as your 1% lows are going to suffer as well because they're not gonna be able to keep those peak boosts that you would need in some of those higher FPS games. Now. Since we have gotten that completely out of the way on the differences between using a 65 watt charger and a 100 watt charger, I'm going to now tell you about these docks. So if you're a laptop power user, if you've got a MacBook, if you've got a Windows PC, uh, even if you're a power user and you're using a handheld, these are fine for and it'll do what you want. They will support up to a 100 watt charge throughput so they can do all of these higher power devices so i would really recommend making sure you have the charger first and then getting the dock if you're going to get the dock or else you're going to leave a little performance out on the table but this is one of my favorites because it has display port i'm more of a fan of display port than hdmi because it supports higher bandwidth and it supports higher refresh rates and i typically have better luck with my monitor using display port anyways and it has ethernet, so if you do wanna download some stuff at a faster rate than Wi-Fi can, can go, there you go, you've got the ethernet as well. And all these ports really help out when you're on a laptop and you're limited on space, limited on ports. You can just have all your stuff hooked up to here, and when you're ready to dock your laptop, plug it in, and you don't have to sit here and plug up every single one of these devices. You can just have them on your desk, chilling, ready to go, chilling by your TV, or whatever you want to do. This makes life a lot easier having a dock and pretty much every bag that I have anywhere I need to go, I'm always taking a handheld, I'm always taking a dock, and I'm always taking a 100 watt charger. Those items right there are going to be in every go bag that you see among all us tech enthusiasts. We've just all come to love these docks and these types of power adapters. So when we advertise them, when we show them on our channel, we actually really are using them in real life. So. The 10 in one adapter right here, it has two HDMI and it has a memory card reader and then it's got more USBs on the side. So you've got, you know, a good bit of input and output as well, but you also have that USB-C. So if you needed to plug up something through there, you can as well. Both of these docks are incredibly well built. I have had a lot of good success and good comments back on these. Everyone I know who owns one, they love it. Um, I highly recommend them. They can do up to 8K on the 10 in one and up to 4K on the 13 in one. Now with that said, they can do your higher refresh as well. So if you're trying to do 1080, 1440 or any of the other resolutions, they'll definitely handle that at 120 Hertz as well. But with the display port, you can do 144 and sometimes 165 through there, depending on your monitor and the cable. So your mileage may vary they are both pretty similar this one even has an ethernet port on the bottom here and i really think that as far as value goes this is like the value king because it has two hdmi ethernet tons of usb but if you need that display port and you just need you know everything balls to the wall this is the way to go right here because you get it all it's a little bit more money but for a laptop user 
I'd say that's worth it. And in conclusion, these power adapters are going to do everything that you need and more. And like I said, this one takes up significantly less room. I mean, I could talk all day about why you need one and what it can do for you, but simply put, I can sit here and charge all of my devices with this small one. So now I have three things charging on this tiny little charger. I mean, that's extremely impressive to be charging my controller, my ally, and this super bright light. This thing pulls a lot of power. This thing is pulling 10 watts right here. And this is still on that 30 watt turbo mode. And my controller is pulling a couple watts there. So yeah, that's really impressive. This thing really does what it says it can do. It's pulling as much power as it's rated at. I haven't had any issues with it so far. Um, haven't had any issues with this one. I've been using this one every single day for quite a while. Been using this one for about a week now. Haven't had any issues out of it. So anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful. I hope maybe this crazy desk of cables and mess was actually educational to you. And maybe you got to see a little bit deeper dive into why you actually need one and where the performance is going and why there is such a big disconnect and argument between the community. It's pretty wild, actually. I will say that. I know I've been rambling for quite a while, but hey guys, big thanks you green, big thanks to you guys. Come check us out on the Discord. Go check out my other laptop review video if you haven't seen that already. It's a banger. I put a lot of time and effort and energy into that. But all that said, I hope all of you guys have a good afternoon, good evening, or good night.